Hello and welcome back to the Study Tube Project. So my name is Ruby and today I am going to be talking to you all about sharks. And I know this is quite different to the other videos I've uploaded so far, but sharks are actually my favourite animals um, alongside polar bears and I just wanted to tell you a little bit more about them. Since I was about nine, I've been an adamant proponent of shark protection. Hopefully this is interesting and hopefully you learned something that you didn't know before. Okay, so I want to start by telling you a little bit more about sharks, a few interesting factoids. Sharks have actually been around for 400 million years. They've actually been around for longer than the dinosaurs. People don't really realise this, but unlike most fish, sharks are actually very intelligent and highly inquisitive. Sharks will also die if they stop swimming or if they swim backwards because it stops their gills from functioning properly. So whilst humans have five senses, sharks actually have a sixth sense, which is electricity. These electroreceptors are situated in the head and this is used for navigation and hunting and it can actually detect a heartbeat which is 328 feet away. So it's no secret that people are historically pretty terrified of sharks and to be fair it definitely isn't surprising that we are. If we look at a shark, they are massive. They can be up to 50 foot long, which is just huge. And great whites have 300 very sharp teeth. Just the combination of these features means that as humans, it is not surprising that we are scared of them. Also Chapman says that fear is something that we've inherited from our early ancestors. And a lot of our ancestral hereditary fears are biological, they are things like animals because in our early stages, animals were our greatest threats. So it's not surprising that lots of us are scared of sharks inherently. But I was reading something by David Ruffiak who has written a little bit about sharks and why we're scared of them. And he says that we're not scared of sharks themselves but rather how they could kill us. So he says, it's the nature of the experience and not the agent per se. So we're scared of the idea of it as opposed to the shark itself. So historically, we have been scared of sharks. Right throughout history, we have been wary of these giant animals. However, it wasn't until 1975 that this fear really shifted and it became more prominent. Oh, it's so windy. I might have to close this window. So what happened in 1975? The movie Jaws came out. Jaws brought sharks into the public eye. Yes, people knew that they existed, they've been around for 400 million years, but people hadn't really been paying as much attention to them. Jaws displayed sharks as murderous creatures. And if we just look at the movie poster for this, it is terrifying. This innocent swimmer and then underneath this giant shark with all of these teeth. I mean, we just look at that and we know that we're supposed to be scared of the shark. This film is positioned to make us scared. And the ramifications of this were actually huge. As I said, Jaws portrayed sharks as murderous, and so after the film, there was very little remorse when sharks were killed. George Burgess, who is the director for the Florida program of shark research, said, and I quote, it was good blue collar fishing. You didn't have to have a fancy boat or gear, an average Joe could catch a big fish and there was no remorse, since there was this mindset that they were man killers. So Jaws problematically presented sharks as number one, being murderous and killing humans, and number two, acting with intent when they did it. So the shark in Jaws comes back to the same beach and attacks swimmers, and it seems to be out of revenge as opposed to instinct, and the autonomy of the shark here makes its actions seem so much worse. So the combination of these two things led to people not only being scared of sharks, but not really caring if they died. Interestingly, Peter Benchley, who wrote the book of Jaws, said, Knowing what I know now, I could never write that book today. Sharks don't target human beings, and they certainly don't hold grudges. And Benchley actually spent a lot of his later life campaigning for the protection of sharks. But the damage was largely done. So along the east coast of America especially, we saw a huge decrease in the shark populations as more and more people went out to kill sharks and bring them back as trophies, kind of as a symbol of power because Jaws presents the catching of the shark as this huge monumental event, as an, as a triumph, uh, something really good. And so people kind of replicated this by going out and catching their own sharks. But obviously it's a completely different story to what Jaws portrays. So Burgess suggests that the number of sharks on the east coast of America fell by a staggering 50% in the years following the film, which is 
huge. Uh, and another researcher, a biologist called Dr. Julia Baum suggests that the shark populations between 1986 and 2000, there was an 89% decrease in hammerhead sharks, 79% decrease in great white sharks, and a 65% decrease in tiger sharks. And that's in the process of only you know, 14 years. So the film Jaws, as you can see, had a really negative effect on how we view sharks. And it wasn't just this single film. After Jaws, Hollywood saw a huge number of films which displayed sharks as the antagonists. And this just has an, this is just an ongoing problem. So yes, we've always been scared of sharks, but Hollywood means that we are more scared of them now than we really have ever been and then we have reason to be scared of them. So of course there are shark attacks each year. An average of 2 to 10 people die each year because of shark attacks. And yes, that's 2 to 10 people, that is bad. But that is so low. We don't have a reason to be as scared as we are about shark attacks. I mean, just the fact that when there is a shark attack, it is front page news. We see it everywhere. Th the fact that the media makes such a big deal of these when they are reported does indicate that they are very rare. The chances of being killed by a shark are a staggering 1 to 264.1 million. You are more likely to be killed by a cow, struck by lightning, and killed by a ladder. When you put it into perspective, the chances of being killed by a shark are very, very low. So as I said, 2 to 10 people a year are killed by shark attacks. Compare this to the 100 million sharks that were killed in 2018. That's equivalent to the whole population of the United Kingdom and Peru. That's three sharks every second. 194 sharks a minute. So why are so many sharks killed? As I said, trophy shark hunting is definitely a thing, especially along the east coast of America. However, the main reason for this extortionately high number of shark deaths is shark fin soup, which I'm sure you've heard of. This is a luxury food in Chinese culture and it costs $100 per bowl, which is just staggering. But you can imagine because the retail price of these is so, so high, fishermen are keen to catch sharks and bring them back because they know that they can get a lot of money for them. In fact, exotic shark fins, such as that of the basking shark, can go for as much as $10,000 to $20,000 per fin. So shark fin soup was first made and eaten during the Ming Dynasty in the 14th century in China. It was only eaten by the very rich and powerful and it would be served to special guests because they were so difficult and rare to catch and as a result it had a kind of status symbol of power, prestige and wealth. Now this status symbol has definitely remained but as commercial fishing has improved and increased and grown, it has become available to a lot more people. So it's not now only the aristocrats and members of nobility who can afford and access the soup, but a large proportion of the population. Now, given the high demand for shark fin soup, fishermen don't usually keep the whole shark when they catch and kill it. They, they will just cut off the fins and throw the body of the shark back into the ocean. And this is so that they can save room on the boat. But as you can imagine, this is even more horrible for the sharks because when they, they're thrown back into the water, they will suffocate or bleed to death, which is actually a really, really painful way to die. It also has the added danger to the ecosystem uh, because shark blood is actually very high in mercury and so it could pollute the surrounding water. Lots of top predators have, have very high mercury levels in their blood because when you consume other animals and other fish, you will kind of take in their mercury and so your own one builds up. So shark mercury levels are very high. The really bad thing is that sharks are apex predators or top predators, they're at the top of the food chain. And so without the shark, the whole of the food chain and the food web is distorted and damaged in ways that we can't even really predict because they are so complex. Yeah, this can have really serious ramifications for the whole ecosystem. Um, sharks are also very susceptible to extinction. So it's difficult for sharks to reinstate these numbers because sharks actually live for a very long time. Great whites live around 60 years, which is a long time. And during that time, they don't reproduce that much and nowhere near as much as other fish. Uh, and this means that they are more likely to die out. It's part of them to regroup their numbers to make up for how many sharks are being killed. So proportionally, we see that 
the mass fishing of sharks is having a huge impact on the overall shark population. So yes, I just wanted to give you an overview of sharks, their perception in the media and the threats that they are facing today because shark protection is something I think is so important and I just wanted to tell you a little bit more about it. I will leave some more resources linked down below if you're interested in learning a bit more. Bikeback, for example, has a lot of really great resources and links, petitions, updates on news. So thank you so much for watching this video. I know that it's not the kind of video that I usually do for the Study Tube Project, but I still hope that you enjoyed it. Remember that the Study Tube Project posts a new video every single day at 6 p.m. So do stay tuned for tomorrow's. Thank you so much, and I will see you soon with another video. Thank you.